For the first few months of 2012, Trinidad James worked as a clothing store clerk. And by that winter, everyone was singing along to his first single, All Gold Everything. Perfect. With a creative sense of style and eccentric personality, Trinidad James's music video attracted millions of views, catapulting him into hip-hop superstardom. Some people say his success boiled down to luck. It wasn't like he had been grinding for years to get noticed by record executives. He was the true definition of an overnight success story. But his descent in the industry happened so quickly, some music lovers now consider him a one-hit wonder. So what really happened to Trinidad James's promising career? Let's find out. Nicholas Trinidad James Williams was born in Trinidad on September 24, 1987. His family briefly moved to Canada before returning to Trinidad. One day, while walking on some stone stairs, he missed a step, fell down, and split his head wide open. Due to his head injury, he told Complex Magazine he has no recollection of anything that happened to him before the age of seven. His family packed up again and moved to New York, then they relocated to Florida, then they moved to Atlanta before moving to South Carolina, and then they finally moved back to Atlanta. Trinidad told Complex that growing up in Atlanta was cool, but he was constantly teased about his Trinidadian accent. To deal with the ridicule, he used his sense of humor to get people to like him, and it worked. Suddenly, he was the cool kid at school. While in elementary school, he sold Dragon Ball Z pictures and Hot Wheels cars to his classmates. In middle school, he hustled Pokemon cards, and in high school, he started selling throwback jerseys and CDs. With his knack for business, he made a name for himself and said, high school for me was just one big hustle. He also became known for being a member of the basketball team and for his shoe and clothing collection. At the age of 15, he was tired of being a financial burden on his mother, so he got his first real job at a landscaping company. Some of his co-workers were in their early 20s with four kids and no high school diploma and their living situations encouraged Trinidad to stay in school. He graduated from his Atlanta high school and started working full-time for a moving company. With his paycheck, he splurged on expensive outfits and would show off his style at nightclubs every weekend. But his priorities were all messed up and he never invested in a car. When the company relocated, he was unable to get to work, so he found himself without a job. Without a stable source of income, he began shopping at thrift stores to fuel his love for fashion. He then got hired at a Waffle House, and with his bank account replenished, he resumed his shopping habits. One day, while shopping at a clothing boutique, culprits took the clothes off the racks and ran, and the manager chased behind them. Suddenly, Trinidad found himself alone in his favorite clothing store and with the keys to the register. But instead of helping himself to the cash, he locked up the store and waited outside until the manager got back. His kind gesture was rewarded and he was offered a job at the boutique. He worked at the store and at Waffle House simultaneously until the store owner started paying him more money so he wouldn't have to split his time between two jobs. When things got slow during the day, he would surf the internet for free beats while writing down some lyrics. Working at the boutique allowed him to network with people from all walks of life. One day, a man working a couple stores down approached Trinidad. They became friends and would play basketball together. In 2011, the man invited Trinidad to a studio session. When Trinidad hopped on the mic, he wasn't satisfied with the poor sound quality. So he splurged on a premium studio session and was able to create a song that would soon become a hip hop classic. When DJ Dirty got a hold of Trinidad's song, All Gold Everything, he played it on his Baller's Eve program. And suddenly, Trinidad found himself with an audience outside of Atlanta and all across the nation. In 2012, the track was officially released and charted in the top 40 of the Billboard Hot 100. By the end of 2012, he had inked a $2 million deal with Def Jam. and the label released his debut mixtape entitled Don't Be Safe. In early 2013, the All Gold Everything music video was released. Trinidad can be seen in his Atlanta hometown wearing gold Chanel chains, rocking long nails and velvet Versace slippers while holding a puppy and riding a gold bike with flat tires. The beat, in combination with his effortless lyrics, helped the video reach millions of views. No one was more surprised by the popularity of the song than Trinidad himself. 
He had only been rapping for one year before his career blew up. He told Interview Magazine all he wanted to do was take care of his mom and give her a better life. With the success of his song and with his multi-million dollar contract, he made XXL's 2013 freshman class list, alongside Schoolboy Q, Travis Scott, and Logic. He also put his focus on generating more wealth. He told GQ Magazine he launched a clothing line called Gold Gang Gear. He called the brand a marketing tactic to capitalize off of his newfound fame. He released a second mixtape entitled 10 Piece Mild in August 2013, and he went out on tour and had to learn how to put on a good show. Because he was so new to the rap game, he did his best to soak up as much knowledge as possible. But during a November 2013 performance, he made one devastating mistake that changed his entire career. While performing at the Converse Rubber Track Studios in Brooklyn, Trinidad reminisced when New York was at the forefront of hip hop culture and when groups like Dipset were dominating the industry. At first, he received applause from the crowd, but then he switched gears and said Atlanta was taking over hip hop. In the face of New Yorkers, Trinidad announced, Atlanta runs y'all musically, as the crowd booed. That same month, he released the diss track called Liars, with the acronym standing for Lames is always acting real sure. In the song, he took aim at those who doubted him and his career, such as Charlemagne the God of The Breakfast Club. It didn't take long for Charlemagne to crown Trinidad the donkey of the day. The radio host called him a, quote, horrible rapper who makes garbage music. Charlemagne added, you're going to fool around and ruin your career before you get the chance to buy yourself some veneers. Charlemagne's co-host, DJ Envy, announced he would no longer play Trinidad's records on the air and other New York programming crews, including Hot 97, followed suit by blacklisting the rapper's music as well. He finished off the year on a bad note, but things were about to get even worse. In August 2014, he announced in a since-deleted tweet he had been dropped from Def Jam. Since the label wasn't going to release his upcoming project, Trinidad told his fans they could listen to the record online for free. He also told those who collaborated on the album he hoped they weren't expecting any payments because he was all out of money. Three days after his announcement, he released a surprise track on SoundCloud called Do and Me. In the song, he opens up about his situation and raps, Lord, please forgive me because I don't know which road to go down. After the initial shock subsided, he said he fell into a depression up until he received a call from his manager that would change his life once again. Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars wanted to use his Don't Believe Me Just Watch lyrics from All Gold Everything in their then upcoming single, Uptown Funk. Trinidad agreed and was given a songwriting credit and 8% royalties. According to a 2017 Forbes article, he had already made $150,000 since the song's release. BuzzFeed News reported that from that track alone, Trinidad would likely remain a very wealthy man, whether he ever writes another hit or not. He was eventually snubbed in 2016 when Mark Ronson, Bruno, and the rest of their team won Grammys for Best Group Performance and Record of the Year. According to the Recording Academy, songwriters aren't recognized in the Record of the Year category. However, if the track would have won Song of the Year, Trinidad would have received a Grammy. Despite the lack of recognition, he said he was very happy to be a part of a mainstream project. The track was just what he needed to build back up his confidence as an artist. He launched his own label, Gold Gang Records, and between the years of 2015 and 2018, he released seven mixtapes. As the head of his own label, he loves being able to pay himself, his artists, and his producers. And according to Forbes, he's still bringing in $5,000 to $20,000 per performance. Trinidad's career is a living example of what to do and what not to do as a new artist. He isn't bitter or upset about how things turned out. However, he's now a strong believer that rappers should never be signed to a major recording contract before proving they can maintain some longevity. He thinks it's unfair that without a loyal, stable fan base to support him, his label expected him to put up big numbers against the Jay-Z's and Drake's of the world. In 2019, he released a new song titled Playlist and was featured on Jaden Smith's song Mission. These days, he's a co-host of Soul Collector's weekly show, Full Size Run, 
a program that discusses the hottest topics in sneaker culture and streetwear. Perhaps his time as a rap sensation didn't last long, but in his eyes, he's not a one-hit wonder. All Gold Everything was a significant contribution to the world of music, and it will remain a classic song for many years to come. Let us know if you're shocked by the outcome of Trinidad James's career. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.